Hi, I'm Vanessa Kirby and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to share some life lessons. I've never felt a particularly stylish person and actually I think maybe because I spend more time thinking about my character style than my own, which I think um, is maybe something I should should spend some more time on and my friends would probably say is an urgent need of. And so because of that, I would describe my personal style as very simple. I loved wearing all black. I kind of have a pair of black boots, a pair of jeans, black jumper, like a polo neck, always a polo neck. The Netflix publicity team for Pieces of a Woman Day when it came out all wore black roll necks as like a, a gesture. I think the most transformative period for me in learning how wardrobe really is so related to a character's interior life was on The Crown. And I think that's because Margaret as a person spent so long and had so many resources and so much time in the mornings to choose what she wore. And like, you know, sometimes we'd have like six fittings for one dress. And it taught me so much, she taught me so much because often we chose costumes where it would be ref totally reflective of how she was feeling. I imagine she felt that morning, I would dress accordingly, you know. After her, it kind of taught me how to use costume to do that all the time, and now I sort of, I do that. Beauty generally, I've learned that, well, simple's always best, and I don't like a ton of, like, chemical stuff on my face or whatever. I actually just use aloe vera, the plant, <laughs> but coconut oil and go to bed. I don't really do anything else. And I've had to, like, slowly strip stuff back, i.e. don't use too much fake tan. And I used to use it all the time. In fact, in my crown audition, I nearly lost feet apart because I had fake tanned ankles because I forgot to do the rest of my legs. I was wearing dungarees. And then I was in a skirt, and so you could see half my leg was really white, half it was bright orange. And Peter Morgan was like, um, are your ankles okay? Um, so I don't use fake tan ever anymore. Also on eyebrows, I made, I made such a dodgy mistake in the 90s of just plucking them so it was like barely there. I think they've taken this long to grow out. <laughs> I guess I've learned about career or my career generally is that the perseverance, I guess, and the picking yourself up even if you've, you've had a slap in the face, <laughs> which I did in many terrible auditions. When I was small, I know I always wanted to do it, you know, and I had no idea whether I could actually do it. And so I guess now looking back, I go, oh my God, I'm, I'm even, I could call myself a, a professional actress. And I remember looking at my first paycheck being like, are you paying me? Like, so I guess in a way, like imagining it and, and kind of having unwavering faith, even though you get a million no's no matter, in all of life and particularly this profession. I think I'm most proud of the crown and that character of Margaret only because I loved her so much, the more I learned about her. Totally fell in love with her and so wanted to do her justice and especially that love story, which no one really knew about. You know, it wasn't in the public consciousness so much anymore how tragic it was and then without doubt I, I think Pieces of a Woman the minute I read the script I knew it was just so important in the sense of there's so many women that have gone through it and felt a lot of silence around it and I'm able to talk about it and have found it really hard to share about their experiences and society finding it really difficult and so I just hope in some small way that this little movie helps people speak out about it where they've found it previously difficult. The main things that made me want to do the, the movie when I read the script was first off I went, oh my God, I've never seen a birth like this on paper. And I realized how little I know, know about that very universal human thing that so many women have been through. I, I read it and I thought, God, we've seen so many deaths on screen, but we've hardly seen any births on screen. So that was so exciting to represent birth and it's like full authenticity, you know, and it's messiness and it's horror and it's like, majesty and beauty and everything. And also the fact that this was dealing with baby loss, you know, that it's so rarely spoken about. And it felt like it was trying to tackle something that that needs to be more in the public conversation and, and consciousness to help people and families that are, are going through it. I learned so much about motherhood in this amazing afternoon that I had where I spent many days shadowing an obstetrician and spending a lot of time with midwives on the labour ward in a hospital in North London. On the final day I was there, a woman came in. She allowed me to, to be with her in the room as she was giving birth, which was just like, I mean, I never could have even acted it without her, not, not remotely. And what I saw her do in those seven hours was 
like a total surrender that I'd never seen before. It taught me a lot about like painful experiences in life, no matter what they are, anything difficult you have to go through, through even if it's day to day, a small thing. Pain is sometimes um, essential and is maybe a journey to something wonderful happening, you know. Before I went to the hospital and I was hoping to, to watch someone give birth for real, one of the doctors said to me, well, just be careful because it might make you not want to do it. And actually it was the complete opposite. And pieces, doing, doing it all has only made me want kids more, honestly. I think it's so essential that we share stories about grief because it's, you know, it unites us all. We all have to grieve. We all lose people we love or things we love or relationships or... And I think sharing our stories of letting go and, and finding our way through those, that really lonely journey of navigating your own loss and coming to terms with it and how your world's changed and your reality is just shattered and you have to sort of put your, the pieces back together. I think when we share our pain, we feel less alone because grief, in my experience, from all the mothers have shared with me in my own uh, um, times of grief in my life, it's such an isolating, lonely feeling. And I think the more we share about it, the less alone we feel. And I feel like privileged to be a part of a, of a film that sort of is not afraid to lean into the really difficult things, you know, and is unflinching in that. And the more we talk about it, the easier it gets. And the more we talk about it, the less lonely people feel. And so I believe sharing is, um, is healing. I've learned about friendship that friends are the, are the constants in your life, you know. I think about life as a series of chapters, you know. A job might last this long or there might be a certain chapter the way you lived in this place or you were in a relationship with a certain person or whatever and all those things are transient but friends are the one of the characters that are all the way through. I'm so lucky I have the best group of friends and a sister who is like my best friend in the world even though I'm really annoying to her I'm sure. I like just love being around them all the time so I like cook big Sunday lunches and they always come over and not now obviously they know I'm really messy <laughs> and they accept it and I have weird things like my favorite food is Brussels sprouts. <laughs> There's nothing more I love than a Sunday with my best friends. Love means that feeling when you're around someone, like my group of friends, for example, where you just feel so alive, and calm, and like everything's right, you know? It's that feeling. I guess the, the most powerful form of love is self-love. And that's something that's taken me a long time to understand even how to do it. A lot of it is just being compassionate to yourself. And when you hear that inner critic, you know, I was talking to myself in a way that I wouldn't speak to my best friends, you know. I mean, there's that saying, isn't it? You, you, you can love others only to the extent you love yourself. So I've been working really hard on liking myself. <laughs> I've learned about confidence that I think it's, you know, the more experiences you have, the easier it is to be confident. The first time I do anything, or, or maybe like I'm learning to do something, it's always hard and I, used to get it really badly. And then I remembered like, you actually have to feel those feelings. You, you can't not feel nervous. You might as well become okay with feeling nervous, make friends with the nervousness, but don't try and get rid of it because you can't. Do you know what I mean? It's like giving myself permission to feel anxious rather than telling myself I definitely shouldn't feel anxious. It's that inner critic voice again, isn't it? Um, the more um, welcoming to all range of experiences I can have, the more confident I feel because I go, Okay, I might feel afraid. I'm gonna try and be okay with feeling afraid and know that it's really normal to feel afraid a lot of the time, or especially in new scenarios, you know? Lockdown has taught me, when your days are so busy and noisy and you're rushing around everywhere and I'm like, I'm, I'm such a, like, a, a doer, you know? I'm always like going here and doing this and I didn't realize how much noise there was, you know, in my life. And then suddenly in lockdown, when you're literally forced for months to just, be in one place and everything gets quite silent and you have to sit with that. And that's really uncomfortable. And I realized that I was quite uncomfortable with silence. I had to make friends with it somehow. And then when that happened, you start to notice the little things that maybe you hadn't noticed before. Like a massive gratitude for tiny things that before you just didn't notice. Like I have like these really cozy, like quite embarrassing actually, like really, they're like teddy bear sheets. They're kind of like, <laughs> but. I woke up every morning, I was like, oh my God, this is so nice and I love it. And I'm so lucky to have a nice bed and live with my 
sister who's like, like appreciate everything about her, you know, and like massive gratitude for all that. So lockdown taught me that and I really hope it continues. <laughs>